nationwide that they want to empower people. They have 7,000 trucks already on ground, and so they want to create 28,000 jobs. And so people left their jobs, people left their businesses, I designed with the hope that they will come back home with a truck. Yes. So at the end of the day, what would we get? In spite of a written agreement, Dangote is a higher than fire entity. Yes. In spite, in spite of a written agreement, they keep changing the game every minute. They keep changing the game every minute to the point where we have not been asked to go. We tell the truck, we try compensation yes. without any sort of enumeration. Yes. Now, 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 some of us have relocated to Ilaro, yes. that small village, the small village at Ilaro in Ogun State for this job. We paid house, house rent, we pay, we spent a whole lot. Children have relocated and restart other schools there. But now we have been asked to leave all that behind for absolutely nothing. That is not acceptable to us. We will continue to discuss with them, dialogue with them. We are not here for any kind of uh, violence or whatever. But make no mistake, our right is our right and we must get it. The issues are very clear. This matter started in April 2015. Yeah. When Dangote placed an advert yes. calling on people to come and apply. Yes. If you have applied, you have met certain conditions. If you have met the 400,000 mileage, you are going to get that to the truck. Yes. 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 Is that so? Yes. yes. We were surprised. We were surprised on February 4, 2017. They called everybody to a hall, to a training hall, and said, hello, and said that you should sign a letter of a disengagement. What is the meaning? What is insulting? What is what was humiliating was the fact that there were soldiers, members of the OPMSS around, yes. some of them helping to take our ID cards from our Then Gotia has the right to hire and fire. Yes. Yes. We are not contesting that. Yes. What we are contesting yes. is that we have reached an agreement. Yes. The offer made yes. in the newspaper, yes. the offer yes. is still still subsist. Yes. So, because we have accepted the offer, yes. it is now for Dan Gote to implement the offer. Yes. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. So if they are not allowing us to meet the 400,000 mileage, yes. one of our demands is that they should give us our no. job. Is that not so? Yes. yes! Our demands are very clear. Yes. And uh, it is that Dan Gote cement our PSC yes. entered into a mutual agreement with us. This agreement was voluntarily entered into by both parties. And now the terms of that agreement are very clear. That in any situation where you know that agreement mutually entered into is to be terminated, it will be mutually terminated by both parties. But to our surprise and to our utmost shock, Dangote Cement PSC unilaterally breached this agreement and terminated that there too. This is in contravention of every loan principle of contract, and that is our case. We are saying Dangote Cement PLC should implement all the uh, propositions in that uh, in that agreement. And what are the propositions? Number one, the payment of all the outstanding uh, sal I mean, uh, areas of salaries belonging to workers. Number two, the performance bonuses that have been provided for and even mutually entered into by, by the workers and by Dangote PLC. Number three is the ownership of the truck. If Dagote has made an offer to the whole world, he should be able to implement it. Yes, he no. cannot approbate and reprobate yes, at the same time. No. And finally, the thing is very clear that business cannot be run on the basis of deceiving the public. Yes, no. You cannot make an offer to the whole world. People live their lives, means of livelihood, live their families to commit themselves to this agreement. And you cannot unilaterally breach this agreement at this time. Now, finally, 
we want to say that this struggle is pinned down to the overall effect and features of the anti-poor, you know, uh, man eat man system in which we have been thrown into. And workers need to link all of this together and even as even get into legislation and whatever means. The most basic fact is that the, the Dangote CNPIC must implement all the demands in this agreement. We call on the Labour Movement, the Nigerian Labour Congress, the Trade Union Congress, the uh, uh, United Labour Congress, the, even the Trade Union organizing in that uh, industry to come to the aid of these workers. Because uh, injury to one, they say it's injury to all. His business acumen has been amply demonstrated in successful investments in sugar, flour, steel, salt, pasta, real estate, and beverages. He has also conquered the cement manufacturing business. Indeed, his company is Africa's leading integrated cement company, engaged in the manufacture, preparation, importation, packaging, and distribution of cement in Nigeria and 14 other African countries. The current total production capacity in Nigeria from its three existing cement plants is 20 to 25 mm TPA. It is also the biggest quoted company in West Africa and the only Nigerian company on the Forbes Global 2000 companies with almost $14 billion market capitalization in the Nigeria Stock Exchange. Without doubt, therefore, Alhaji Aliko Dangote is success personified. What gives me joy? is how many people have actually helped through job creation, through doing so many things, you know, and in future I want to make sure that Nigeria is self-sufficient in rail lines, uh, in power, in a lot of things. Three years ago, the Dangote Group, which focuses on provision of local value-added production and services that meets the needs of the African population, approached the Central Bank of Nigeria to indicate interest to invest in refining crude oil so as to facilitate the production of petrochemicals, fertilizer, and fuel. Today, the Dangote oil refinery project, which is valued at $14 billion, is ongoing at the Lekki Free Trade Zone, Lagos State, with a tantalizing target to refine 650,000 barrels of crude oil per day. Uh, the area of the refinery, that is uh, area of the plot plan, uh, refinery plot is uh, 2,135 hectares. It has various process units and uh, then dispatch facilities. Uh, it has its own captive power plant, uh, sulfur uh, dispatch facilities. It has a flare unit. Uh, it is a uh, self-sufficient refinery that produces the power uh, within the refinery, what is the power consumption required. This refinery will produce gasoline, diesel, aviation fuel, household kerosene, slurry as raw material for carbon black, as well as 2.8 million metric tons per annum of urea and ammonia. A combined refining capacity of Nigeria's three refineries comprising Port Harcourt, Kaduna and Wari 
is put at 445,000 barrels per day. In the recent past, it has produced about 6 million liters daily for premium motor spirit. When completed, this refinery will refine 650,000 barrels per day with yields of 55.2 million liters of PMS, 3.4 million liters of diesel, the high-end Euro 5, and 8.8 .8 million liters of aviation jet fuel daily. At 55.2 million liters of PMS, Nigeria's daily consumption of 40 million liters is already taken care of. Before now, Nigeria was a paradox, being one of the world's largest producers and exporters of crude oil and yet one of the biggest importers of refined product. Trillions of Naira is spent every year in subsidy claims for oil marketers. Not to talk of immeasurable man-hours lost each time there is real or artificial scarcity of fuel. But now, the first of its kind integrated oil refinery project will resolve this paradox with its longest single train refinery in the world. In Dangote Group, we like challenging things and we like to make sure that we do things where we will make our country proud and also self-sufficient. So uh, once we do this, Nigeria will never ever import any oil at no. all. Uh, no petroleum products, zero, you know, will meet up the full capacity. And uh, we've taken up a land that will allow us to grow three times. You know, so we have plans of also further growth. But the challenges, I think, will uh, be able to surmount most of them because, number one, we are a local domesticated refinery. Most of the logistics cost will not be there. And then we don't have to pile up a lot of petroleum products, you know, in stock because the refinery is there, it's working. Obviously, yes, maybe we'll have about 15, 20 days of reserves. After months of work on site, the dredging has covered a major portion, although heavy-duty work is ongoing. The activities and spillover have also been well thought out and a smooth supply and distribution system is what will be obtained here. This is the setting that prompted the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, to pay an impromptu visit to the Lekki site of the world's biggest refinery project. The visit, which was like the gathering of eagles, afforded the CBN helmsman the opportunity to Jojo with Africa's greatest entrepreneur of all times on the critical need for a foreign exchange portfolio that will aid the importation of critically needed equipment. Interest charges, handling charges, which we pay uh, foreign companies, dumberage. Mm -hmm. So all this, because for example, now if he needs uh, maybe, uh, 
Now you go and buy one cheap. <laughs> That's what he does. You okay. so go and buy 35,000 tons. He doesn't have to buy. You will just take a family every day, give me 3,000 tons. So, okay, so you don't need all the storage, <coughs> all the other shit. The bank, bank will issue us SBLC yeah. and uh, every day yeah. and then uh, supply at the end of the month. We even give him credit, credit at the end of the month. So yeah. we too, we create also with our own bankers <laughs> who bank. will not be <laughs> paying on our behalf to the NFC for the so all these transactions, instead of being in a boat, they are yeah. right behind yeah. So the banks will make money instead of taking the business out there. Okay. Shipping companies will not collect also those 30,000 dollars per ton. That they do when they do yeah. come up. Which now, because you know, Central Bank will open LC. Those uh, guys, they will collect their own. And that's and 26 naira per litre. And that's 26 naira per litre. You see, this one is how they will come in. You know, so the bring us travel by. by. So we can get it from here. Apparently elated by the noble and patriotic vision that gave birth to the Dangote oil refinery project, as well as the infectious commitment of the investors towards the success of this ambitious enterprise, the governor of the central bank said, your ongoing $14 billion refinery investment will enjoy our support, no doubt. We are doing this to fast track the importation of equipment you need for a speedy completion of that project and to encourage other Nigerians to follow suit. This tour is necessary to lend our support to this laudable project that will transform Nigeria's downstream oil sector. About two and a half to three years ago, he actually uh, came to the banks. At that time, I was, at, I was an operator. And he said he wanted to go into fertilizer, petrochemical, as well as refinery business. We started with the the fertilizer side of it. But today, these three projects have been, um, uh, we're costing them at almost about $14 billion, out of which he is contributing 50%. $14 billion, about 2.8 trillion naira. And I think we must congratulate some, um, a man like Ali Kodangote for this very laudable. Why have I come here? I have come here to see, and then so I can also tell Nigerians that we need more we need to support and give support to people like Aleko Dangote uh, for what they are doing for Nigeria. This is a time when we are talking about um, diversifying our economy away from oil. Fertilizer, the, out, the output from fertilizer is ammonia and urea. The output from the petrochemical is polypropylene and polyethylene. The output from the refinery are the various final products for the petroleum products. These are, I, these are products that we today import into the country. If we dimension how much the country spends on the importation of these products today into Nigeria, consuming foreign exchange, this stands at close to almost about 35 to 40 percent of our import needs. So you can imagine what would happen to the, 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 the savings in foreign exchange by the time the fertilizer is completed in 2017 and by the time the petrochemical and refinery project is completed during the early part of 2018. 
we expect that by the time these projects are completed, we will not only service, it will not only meet the needs of our domestic requirements, but by the time it is completed, we will be, he will be exporting these products to the point where he will be selling foreign exchange to Nigeria, to Nigerians and the Central Bank of Nigeria to the tune of almost about $6 billion a year. That is the kind of project that we think we should support. And we think we need to encourage more Nigerians to begin to think like Alaja Adud Ali Godang. After you knock up everything, you know, you get to have special, you know, these are bushes, they go there with the chain. You can float the water, you still know. You can float the water. You can float the water, uproot all these trees, then you burn them. After you burn them, now you dry them out, then now you put some sand. Compact yes. and then piling. Yes. Yeah. I know the sand they charge you per cubic uh, feet. It's not, that, it's not that they don't know the measure, there's a measure. You and them will be measured. Like our own now, if we exceed that. Who is charging you? The people who are sand. Uh, uh, okay. uh, it's, uh, it's not that they just come and feed everything. That's all no, no, no. right. They don't know. No, no, no. This young drone, they are the biggest in the world. They told you not from Belgium. Belgium.